Hiya, yeah. this is Planner's Place. Um, today we're going to look at how to remove the A and asterisk suffixes from actual dates and constraint dates, respectively, in Primavera P6. If you're very familiar with Primavera P6, you will know that um, actual dates have got the suffix A appended to them, and constraint dates have got the suffix asterisk appended to them, that's good because it distinguishes for actual date between activities that have not started and activities that have started or completed. And for constraint date, it shows you that um, the dates are not held in place by logic. It's using a, using a date to drive it. And most times it's with milestones that you use constraints. And also, for those coming from Microsoft projects, you'll be surprised that um, in Primavera P6, we've got two types of milestones. And for start milestones, they don't have finish dates. I shouldn't say they don't have finish date. The finish date is not displayed. And for finish milestones, the start dates are not displayed. So these are the three default, these are the default and ways of displaying dates in, in Primavera P6, but what if, I mean, some, I've been in meetings where people keep asking questions, why do you have A after the date, or why do you have an asterisk, or why is the, where's there no finish date for a milestone or a start date? And, um, if you don't want that, if you want to get rid of the suffixes and these blank fields, then sit back and watch this video, because that's what we're going to go through today. And another advantage of taking out the the suffixes and this blank field is outside an export to Excel. If you're doing copy and paste from Primavera P6 to Excel or saving a report as um, in Excel, your dates, they go with these suffixes. But if you do an export, it doesn't. But the problem with export is Maybe we should just have a look. So if we do an export, right click, export to Excel. Yep. So let me just say, call this export. Successful. If I open the export here. Yeah. Maybe just um, create a filter. You see the dates, no suffix attached but the problem is these dates the export comes in a in a database table so it's like straight straight up but some people who don't have access to p6 would want you to give them a download in excel that looks like your schedule so if i open a new file go to p6 control all copy Back to Excel, paste. So this has the same group format like my schedule comes with the WBS and everything with the grouping. So you can color code the headings for them. And then it looks like the schedule, but it's in Excel and they can play around with it. But in this case, See the dates, they've got the suffixes and as they've got the suffixes, you see. But if we go back to the export, the export hasn't got that. So while this is good, it doesn't, it's not in the sh format of the schedule. So if someone wants to play with this, fine, but if they want a replica of the schedule in Excel, then you have to do a copy and paste, or you do an export, you do a, you generate a report. You, you use this to generate a report and save that report in Excel, and it will do the grouping that you want. So let's say, let me save this. Let's call this copy and paste. And also, if I say, if I do a PDF print preview, you see 
if you want to issue a PDF of this, it also comes with this date with this suffixes. But if you want to get rid of them, this is how we do it. First of all, I'll suggest you have two layouts. One for your normal uh, updates, for when you do your updates with your this thing, and the other for what you your dis your either we call it your print layout or your display layout. So I'll call it print layout, which is so I will need um, to do that to remove the asterisk and these blank fields. And another advantage, sorry, before I go on, another advantage of um, of filling this blank, not having any blank fields for for the milestones is when you're setting up formulas, instead of writing if statements, you maybe just want to subtract start from finish date. Instead of writing if statements, you could you need this, you it would be good if this could be populated and straight off we can uh, do, do our subtraction or what a manipulation that we want to do. So to remove the actuals, we need two user-defined fields. So if I go en enterprise user-defined fields, um, the first one will be I like using numbers so that it stays at the front. I'll say zero one start date. Change the form, the data type to start date. Zero to finish date. Change the data type to finish date. And those are our UDF fields. Okay, remember we're working on our print layout. So now I want to add this the new fields to my to my layout. Go to user defined. This is why I use numbers so that they appear at the top of the user um, when I'm adding columns. So here I come, I add start date, I add finish date. I don't want the zero one and zero two appearing when I print this or when I yeah, when I print this, so I'll click edit column, give it a new title, remove the zero one. Do the same for finish date, remove the zero two. Yeah, I like centralizing my date. 60, 60. Uh, maybe 60s, maybe 60s is too small. Just make it 90. Yeah, more like it. Save your layout, like saving. Now, we've got the two field, the two new start and finish date fields. What we're going to do is we go to global change. I love global change, it's so powerful. Create a new global change. Um, so maybe we call it remove, remove suffixes um, blanks. That's the milestone blanks. For the if section, um, nothing. We don't need to do anything there. We come to the then, then you add. So you look for the our UDF also here because we use numbers. They appear at the top of your parameters. So for the parameter, we choose start date equal to start date. So we're giving it the P6 start date and finish date equal to the piece if finish and that's it we click change it's asking if we want to proceed because you can't undo yes and the global change report shows you the new values yep i'm happy with it I commit changes do I want to save log? No. 
click OK. Close this and you see our fields, our new start and finish date fields are populated. You can see this is a actual date, no suffix, constraint date, no suffix, milestones, it has both fields populated, both start and and that's it all the way. So what we do now, we hide our default, because this is our print layout, we hide our default start and finish fields and save our print layout. If you want to do your update, you go to your update layout. You, have, you still have your actual, your surface X and your blanks for milestone, but for print, you go to your print layout. So uh, that's it. So for copy this now, copy, go back to our copy and paste. You see this has a asterisk, what we want, we don't want that. Paste, and you see straight away, we have proper dates. And that's it. But note that anytime you make, you do updates, you update your schedule, you make changes to your schedule, you do a time analysis, you need to run this global change so that your user defined, um, there's a global change now. Yeah, remove surface six. I think I need to give it a number. Modify, make it zero four so that it appears at the top. You need to run global change. You need to run this global change so that your user defined fields are populated. And that's all for today. Like I said, this was going to be a quick tip. So, yeah, I hope you find this useful and catch you next time. Cheers.